in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and she is also a Hackaday Prize finalist. Congratulations, Kate. So welcome, Kate, to the stage. My name is Kate Reed, and I'm from Dover, Massachusetts. I am honored and excited to be here at Hackaday, representing the hand drive wheelchair attachment that I've been working on for the past eight months with my partner, Nathaniel Tong. Creativity is a big part of my life, and I'm here today to talk about the creative process and action. I was a sassy child. I was the kid who got kicked out of class for speaking my mind to grown-ups about subjects that were apparently off limits to kids. I got kicked out of class once for doodling, which was apparently considered a waste of time and disrespectful to my peers. I thought silent reading was too quiet, so I socialized in the bathroom instead. Even at age nine, you could say I was already becoming the architect of my own education. I felt rules and regulations warranted regular review. I spoke up often, and maybe a little too often. Now, reactions to my sassiness were not good. They ranged anywhere from year-long battles of wills with my teachers to the dismissive response of, oh, she's an artist, like that was a bad thing. Well, I am an artist, and it's a good thing. I see and feel the world very deeply. My cell phone is filled with photos of fire escapes because they're beautiful. When I see intricate cloud formations in the sky, I want to draw them. But I also see the elderly person on the street struggling with the zipper of their jacket, and my mind starts thinking of inventions that could help them. I try to always be present, always question, and always create new things. My work as an artist reaches far beyond the canvas and informs every aspect of my life. But it's that inner spunk, that inner sass, that drives me to question. Why do we do the things we do? How come we do it that way? And what if we did it this way? We need that spunk to push boundaries, push limits, and think differently. I am a student at New View Studio, an innovation school for middle and high school students in Cambridge, Massachusetts. At New View, we work in a studio model and are presented with two-week open-ended questions, which can be anything from solve global warming to redesign the subway system. At Newview, we research, brainstorm, develop, and prototype new ideas, then present those working prototypes to the community. My work at Newview keeps me in a perpetual state of creating. And it's in this state of creating that I've come to see patterns in my creative process that involve open-ended exploratory thinking, a willingness to try something new and fail, and the strength in collaborating with others, either fellow makers or users. For me, creativity is a muscle and you have to practice at it every day in order to strengthen it. Creative thinking is essential to innovation. This sounds obvious, but without expanded and open-ended thinking, advancements in technology move very slowly, and solutions to problems are often variations on something that already exists. I can't tell you how many times my team has started brainstorming a solution to a problem, only to find out that our solution already exists and that we can buy it on Amazon. To create something that is truly innovative, you need to think to the very core of a problem and think about the people you are creating for and then begin dreaming up new solutions. It's the fun part, the magic part, the anything is possible part. What usually gets in the way of this process is your own insecurity about whether your thinking is too out there or even in the right direction. 
You just have to move through your own self-judgment to enjoy the fun of creating. I know you all get this, as we're all here together at this conference sharing our new ideas and creations. The sooner you can shed the self-judgment, the faster the ideas will come. I had to blast through my own self-judgment when I began the studio with my partner to create a hand-drive wheelchair attachment. My partner and I were challenged to, to hack a wheelchair. We created a hand-drive wheelchair attachment that can attach to any wheelchair and allows it to be powered in a rowing motion. This motion is good because it's better for your back as it allows you to sit up straighter. It uses bigger muscle groups so it's more efficient for your body and it also keeps your hands cleaner. Traditionally, lever power wheelchairs come as an all-inclusive kit, meaning they're built into the chair. And because of this, they cost anywhere from two to $10,000. But because our hand drive wheelchair attachment is almost entirely 3D printed and completely open source, ours costs $50 to make, which is less than 1% of the cost of the competitors on the market. When my partner Nathaniel and I began this project, some of our first fantastical thoughts were to create a wheelchair that could go up and down curbs or stairs, or to create a wheelchair with a deployable ramp. But as we thought very broadly about a wheelchair user's experience, we realized most of our ideas would involve a complete redesign of a wheelchair, which would be cost prohibitive for the users. The more we researched and learned about wheelchair user, the more we uncovered a basic need for wheelchair speed and comfort, and the need to keep user costs low. It was then that we began to focus in on the lever power wheelchair. Even though Nathaniel and I were zeroing in on a direction, we kept asking questions. Why does a lever power wheelchair cost so much? Clearly, there is a gap from maker to user if the price is pinned so high that most people can't even use it. How can we make lever power wheelchairs cheaper and accessible to all? How can we make them faster? Can we make them look great? Sometimes asking the most obvious of questions can lead to a breakthrough. You have to keep looking back to the start of a problem and make sure you are solving the right problem for the right reasons. This is to say there's great value in taking time with this beginning phase of the creative process to really ponder a problem instead of immediately looking for a solution. As the poet Rilke said in Letters to a Young Poet, live the question, perhaps then, gradually, without even noticing it, live your way into the answer. Being an innovator, a creator, a maker is all very romantic. We portray it as this dream job full of fun toys, great inventions, and lots of cash. But in reality, it's hard work. The creative process is bumpy. Coming up with a new idea is the fun part because there's no responsibility yet. It's just an idea and anything is possible. But letting that idea grow and stand up to the test of what really is possible is tough. You need to be able to separate yourself from your idea to let it grow. People are always going to make suggestions, make improvements, and even criticize your ideas. Sometimes your idea will change beyond recognition, right before your eyes. You need to be strong enough to realize that these criticisms aren't about you and that you and your idea are separate. Sometimes it's hard to let go of a design. For example, with the hand drive, we really wanted to use spring steel for our springs because it was sleek and we liked the look of it. We kept trying to use it for the springs of the ratchets, but every single time something different went wrong, and they were either bent or they were springing in the wrong direction. It was very hard to get the angle just right. We tried long springs, short springs, tight springs, loose springs. The annoying part was that the spring steel was so hard to cut that every single time we screwed up, it was a huge process to cut the right piece again. It was amazing how willing we were to ignore the obvious. The spring steel wasn't working. After working with it for a full month, we finally had to let it go. It felt devastating to work on something for so long and just abandon it. Giving up is hard but necessary. Failing is part of the creative process. Over time, failure becomes less of a personal stab and more of an inspiration to try again. In fact, during the brainstorming process, maybe only one out of every 20 ideas actually has potential. As this idea develops, there will be complications every step of the way. Don't give up. We are on our sixth prototype of the hand drive and have been through hundreds of sub-prototypes. We've printed so many parts that it's amazing our 3D printers aren't on fire. From the outside, one might view our sub-prototypes as failures, but we see them as necessary steps to an end. 
It was through all these sub-prototype failures that we made important discoveries about force, design, and materials to use. Speaking of force, I was lucky enough to be invited to the White House to present the hand drive to President Obama. Of course, all day long, the hand drive worked just fine for all the senators and scientists. But naturally, as soon as President Obama tried it, it broke. What a powerful man. When things fail, don't give up. Keep moving forward. With all this failing every day, living in the creative space can be exhausting, and it's great to have buddies. Collaboration and teamwork are everything. They give your project the strength of multiple perspectives and keep you going. Nathaniel and my strengths often play off each other's, and at other times, our strengths flip-flop. We all see the world differently, and it's important to listen to each other if we want to create innovations that are useful and relevant to all. You want to surround yourself with a team that brings different skills, ideas, and perspectives to the table. Also, as a project develops, a bubble can form around you, and you can forget to check in with the outside world. While we all want what's best for our projects, we have to remember that sometimes we can't give it that best shot all by ourselves, and we need feedback. When you start to feel like you have the whole world in your hands, that's a warning sign that it's time to reach out and seek new perspectives. In the beginning of our project, after working on the hand drive for a few weeks, we were feeling pretty good about our progress and had our first working prototype. After showing it to our first wheelchair user, he was surprised to see that it only went in one direction. He pointed out how critical it was for wheelchair to be able to go both forwards and backwards, which informed our next iteration. Three months later into the project, we had a similar realization with speed. While our hand drive was much improved, the speed was still potentially slower than the tradi traditional method of powering a wheelchair. We then set out to make a geared up version of the hand drive, which is our current design. Without getting this feedback from our user group, we would have never known to make these changes. Different perspectives are invaluable, be they male, female, old, young, clients, whole communities, and even people completely unfamiliar with your project. Feedback is useful, time efficient, and it's more fun when more people are involved in your process. So much of our world revolves around competition, which is isolating. Millions of people and countless companies are all competing to do the same thing, and to do that same thing the very best. What if we took all that energy and found it into collaboration instead? Instead of people competing to do the same thing better, imagine people coming to together to share their new skills and perspectives to create new things. Collaboration opens up new creative spaces, and these creative spaces become our future. Thank you for having me here today. I'm honored, I'm looking forward to meeting more of you throughout the weekend. Um, until then, think big, flaunt your fail, and remember, life is more fun with friends. Keep flexing your creativity muscle every day and never give up your sass. Thank you, Kate. So Kate will be in the Q&A area, and we're going to take a short break for coffee.